Good afternoon friends. Today we are going to summarize outcome of 22nd GST Council meeting held on 6th October 2017. A lot of decisions are being taken in this 22nd GST Council meeting which we all are complimenting government and GST Council all state finance minister to look forward and provide ease of business to trade industry and commerce. Let's start with the first important decisions taken reverse charge method as applicable under section 9 subsection 4 of CGST Act 2017 under section 5 subsection 4 of IGST Act 2017 is being suspended till 31st March 2018 and what is this section 9 subsection 4 when being recipient if you are a taxable person purchasing taxable goods or services from unregistered supplier then reverse charge method was applicable and there was only one specific exemption provided for intrastate purchase of taxable goods or services for an amount not exceeding 5000 rupees per day from any or all supplier. This particular 9.4 is being suspended but section 9 subsection 3 which is for specified goods or services under reverse charge method will continue. Now I would like to highlight of course this particular suspension of reverse charge under section 9 subsection 4 is a laudable one, appreciating one. But the question comes this particular provision was not there in first model GST law when first model GST law came on public domain on 14 June 2016 it was not there on revised model GST law on 26th of November 2016. It was a part of final law and this was creating big hue and cry in a market. We have to capture all the purchases of taxable goods or services from unregistered supplier and only specific exemption provided for 5000 rupees from any or all supplier per day but there was lot many operational inconvenience. Now question comes whether the suspension which has been given till 31st March 2018 to my considered view this provision should be done away completely for two important reasons. First of all it is operationally inconvenient and second legally it is quite difficult to make it effective in Indian GST scenario. Let's look at in section 9 subsection 4 whenever being recipient I'm registered purchasing taxable goods or services from unregistered supplier I have to raise consolidated invoice self invoice to myself. I need to capture all multiple suppliers name all multiple HSN code and SSE code of various goods or services procured by me and their respective rate operationally inconvenient. It amount to double taxation even sometime you will find it is even crossing the MRP. Let's say I'm purchasing mineral bottle. Mineral bottle is a MRP based product. So if I'm registered recipient purchasing mineral bottle from unregistered supplier then what happened that unregistered supplier must have purchased has not availed the credit and MRP of mineral bottle is inclusive of all taxes. Again on the same product I have to discharge GST under reverse charge method over and above MRP. This is what beyond MRP double taxation for simple region unregistered supplier has not taken credit. Now when I'm purchasing from him again the taxation part is included in the pricing charged by unregistered supplier while supplying to me. So again I have to pay under reverse charge. Though I agree credit would be available but there is negative list coming from legal front legal footing. Let's say I'm registered in Delhi. I go to a restaurant in Gurgaon and that restaurant is 
unregistered. So what happened if I'm going to Gurgaon unregistered restaurant and eating out their food and beverage sales promotion for my client? What happened? That restaurant going to charge as per GST law on the basis of location of supplier and place of supply being in Haryana CGST and Haryana SGST. Now question comes, I am registered in Delhi, I am recipient registered in Delhi. Now I have to discharge the liability of Haryana CGST and Haryana SGST where I am not registered. How I, how I am going to discharge this liability of Haryana legally, it is going to be very inconvenient for any registered recipient to discharge the liability. To my considered view, this particular reverse charge method as provided under section 9 subsection 4 should be done away completely. Though it is being suspended till 31st March 2018, some of the important questions still coming in. Those who have paid the taxes under section 9 subsection 4, what happened to those SAC? If they are paid away, problem. what happened when credit was not available? Second and third and foremost, you must have seen in the trade to, uh, to make this transaction taxable and to discharge the liability under reverse charge method in the hands of recipient. Lot of taxpayer have changed their ERP system. They have done lot of hard work. So what happened? Initial three months, they have done lot of hard work to capture these transactions. Now they have to done away with. Again, they have to start if it is implemented from April 2018. My only humble submission to the government of India would be that such kind of provision, which is operationally inconvenient, legally not tenable, should not be the part of GST. If at all, we want to see good and simple tax. Second important change, you know the aggregate number for taking registration is 20 lakh rupees. An aggregate turnover includes taxable turnover, exempt supplies, export of goods or services, interstate supply. The first and foremost question is, if you are engaged in interstate supply, then this 20 lakh threshold which is being given for registration is not applicable. For interstate supply, compulsory registration. So there was small service provider and they were having the problem. In service tax regime, they were supposed to charge service tax only when threshold aggregate value of taxable turnover crosses 10 lakh rupees. Now, in service tax era when you have seen whether they do intrastate or interstate, at least 10 lakh rupees was the threshold amount exemption provided to them. But in GST regime, it's 20 lakh rupees, but for interstate, even for rupee one, they have to take compulsory registration. Now, government has understand this practical problem, and now they have given specific exemption to a small service provider in case he is engaged in interstate supply of services. In that case, they can enjoy exemption if their turnover is less than 20 lakh rupees. But to my considered view, this aggregate turnover, which includes exempt supplies, should be done away with. There should be aggregate value of taxable turnover. To my mind, that is the best way to calculate threshold amount for taking registration. Coming to the third component, com composition dealer. This composition dealer provision in GST regime importantly meant for SME and MSME sector. Threshold amount, aggregate turnover, now increased from 75 lakh rupees to 1 crore for special category state other than Jammu and Kashmir and Uttaranchal, it is being increased from 50 lakh to 75 lakh rupees. Now, this is for the composition dealer, but if you look at composition dealer, there are a lot of questions still remain. And those questions are very important questions. And we have seen in SME and MSME sector, people, traders are not coming forward. If you look at composition dealer from trader perspective, 
only 1% need to be paid, for manufacturer 2% need to be paid, for restaurant 5% need to be paid. But the questions which is being raised by such SME and MSME sector is, if they have to discharge GST 1% by trader, 2% by manufacturer, they are asking we have to pay this 1% or 2% on aggregate turnover which includes exam supplies as well. So their question is why we need to include exam supplies in our aggregate turnover on which we have to pay GST liability which is otherwise not taxable, exempted. First question, what GST council has done, they have set up group of minister to look into certain subject matter. The first subject matter is aggregate turnover shall exclude exam supplies possible or not. This is the one subject matter. Second subject matter for composition dealer, he cannot be engaged in interstate outward supply meaning thereby he cannot undertake or do interstate outward supply that is the very negative factor for that composition dealer scheme is not being taken up by the trade industry and commerce this component again need to be looked by group of minister and third component you look at composition dealer this composition dealer would be purchasing but no itc in the hands of composition dealer and he either one person by trader two person by manufacturer and five person by restaurant question comes whatever gst paid on purchase becomes cost and then again they have to charge one person two person five person respectively and uh, they will raise bill of supply to the other taxable person so whoever is purchasing from composition dealer will not get any credit because composition dealer will raise bill of supply not the taxable invoice question comes whether some credit can be given in the hands of composition dealer to make it more lucrative that's what we all are looking into composition dealer and importantly service sector is also asking why this composition dealer scheme is not available to service sector that part can again be looked into and i think if these four important component which we are discussing today for the composition dealer even though threshold amount is being increased from 75 lakh to 1 crore for special category states 50 lakh to 75 lakh these four important parameters which I discussed just a while ago government must looked into if these are being liberalized I'm sure the small trader SME and MSME would be benefited and they will come forward for taking registration under composition dealer scheme Going forward, there is another important ease of business provided for SME and MSME sector. Any taxable person having aggregate turnover less than 1.5 crore, they are being given privilege to file quarterly return as against monthly return and they can also pay quarterly taxes good one as against monthly payment of tax monthly filing return it is being now provided for such SSE having aggregate turnover less than 1.5 crore they can file quarterly return and pay quarterly taxes but important question which is coming in there are two category now being created the small uh, taxpayer less than 1.5 crore and the last taxpayer more than 1.5 crore. So last taxpayer will continue to file monthly return, continue to pay taxes on monthly basis. Now, Honorable Finance Minister has said that 90% uh, major taxpayer are falling in the category of less than 1.5 crore. The first question comes when GST is settling down, it's taking its own time and GST and network is not ready at this point of time. 
fully or effectively why can't we do the similar system for all the taxpayer irrespective of 1.5 crore limit be it small be it larger let me first we come on board understand the gst compliances understand how to file the return and once this comfort zone will come to all the sector at whatever level be at small medium and large then gst would be smooth for better understanding and implementation second question comes if last taxpayer having turned over more than 1.5 crore purchasing from small taxpayer having turned over less than 1.5 crore what happens small taxpayer would be filing quarterly return meaning thereby he would be uploading his outward supply invoice details quarterly selling to a last taxpayer having turned over more than 1.5 crore how credit mechanism will work because small taxpayer would be uploading information quarterly last taxpayer would be uploading information monthly how the credit flow if purchase is being made from small taxpayer by a large taxpayer though press release said it would be monthly credit would be available to the last taxpayer even though it is purchased from small taxpayer and small taxpayer is filing quarterly return but we need to look into such kind of you know arrangement to be made in gst and network and their corresponding changes need to be done in erp application of the trade industry and commerce we need to again look at why these important aspect we are discussing for simple region that we are doing lot many changes in erp similarly gst and network has to do lot many changes now such changes which is coming so frequently takes time to configure in the erp so we have to really understand small taxpayer filing quarterly return uploading his outward supply details quarterly how the credit will flow to the last taxpayer who is filing monthly return but press release said yes it is possible and monthly credit would be provided to the last taxpayer other important decision decision which are being taken by gst council the first one for the export sector you know export is zero rated but july and august we have seen the downside in the export happening from the country india the first region watch working capital blockage in pre gst era there was exemption on procurement of input and input services meant for manufacturing of goods or services for export purpose but in gst era now if at all you are purchasing input and input services you have to pay gst and go for the refund but there is no refund mechanism available on gst and network gst council has decided for the month of july the refund would be granted by october 10 and for the month of august refund would be granted by october 18 now this is the first to provide each for the working capital blockage and then interim exemption is being provided only up to 31st march 2018 and thereafter government is talking about e wallet where is national credit would be given to the exporter and this national credit would be working like immediate refund mechanism in the hands of exporter so we have to see how this e wallet concept is going to be implemented but these are the important decisions taken for export perspective to provide ease of business but still i can tell you that two three important point for export sector as well deemed export you must have seen in pre gst era certain transaction supply of goods still not leaving the country but still uh, termed as deemed export like when supplies made to international competitive bidding contract power contract deemed export there the provision section 147 in gst law which talks about deemed export but none of the transaction is being notified as yet for the deemed export second there the disparity between export of services versus import of services what is this if 
I'm a branch. I'm procuring any services from my another branch or actual outside India. It is import of services reverse charge GST applicable. In the case of export, when my branch in India or actual in India giving services to counterpart outside India, branch or actual outside India, it is not export of services GST applicable. This is one disparity. Second, you must have heard of intermediary services, commission agent. So what happened if I'm an Indian commission agent providing services to foreign supplier to find out customer base in India, then my services are given to the foreign supplier is not export of services, GST applicable, even though I'm bringing foreign exchange in India. What would be in reverse case when foreign commission agent providing services to Indian supplier in that case GST not applicable and in this case foreign exchange is going out of the country this disparity was there in service tax regime from 1st October 2014 it's being uh, carried forward in GST regime need to be looked into export definitely need to be looked into and the thumb rule should be in simplistic term that providers should be in India, receivers should be outside India and money is coming in convertible foreign exchange. But because of place of supply provision, certain transaction even looks like export but not termed as export and these are creating disparity. But it must be complimented and appreciated that government is understanding the problem and they are trying to ease such obstacle which is coming for the export of goods or services. Other important decisions which are being taken by GST Council, e-way bill is being suspended till 31st March 2018. It would be effective only from April 2018. Good one. TDS tax deducted as source, tax collection as source is again going to be effective from April 2018. Good one. Now one specific uh, benefit provided you know advance for supply of goods GST was applicable now for SSE having aggregate turnover less than 1.5 crore if they are receiving some advance for supply of goods then GST is not applicable on advance GST to be levied only at the time of supply of goods for SSE having aggregate turnover less than 1.5 crore Government labor intensive works contract now would be taxable at the rate of 5% as against 12% and leasehold cars where such leasehold car contracts are entered prior to 1st July 2017. The big hue and cry because what happened for leasehold car the GST rate would be applicable as applicable on car. Now there is abitment provided for 35% effectively 65% value would be taxable. So leasehold cars for which contract entered prior to July 1, 2017 GST rate would be applicable on 65% value as applicable on car. Now coming 27 items are where GST rates are being revised. They are they are reduced from 28% uh, to 18% where you get stones which is uh, Kota stone, Chhattisgarh stone. You must have seen man-made yarn which was 18% taxable now reduced to 12%. There are 27 items where revision has taken place and even GST council has thought of to develop some paper for fitment committee to look at how the GST rate can be fit into. Otherwise, we are finding a lot of classification dispute which is coming on public domain and you must have seen the such classification dispute are adding hue and cry in the trade industry and commerce. Two, three important 
things I would like to highlight. Government is coming out with the answers on Twitter and FAQ. But Twitter and FAQ comes with a disclaimer. It is only for educational purpose. And sometimes answers are very contradictory. So for that purpose, it is highly advisable that government should come out with a circular or notification as against answer given on Twitter and FAQ, which is not having any legal sensitivity. Coming subsequently, which we are finding at this point of time, formation of advanced ruling authority. Advanced ruling authority is important to decide classification, taxability, time, value, input tax credit. But there is no advanced ruling authority is being set up as on date. Otherwise, look at lot of litigation. So many writ petitions are being filed in different high courts and more are in pipeline and dispute are persisting. And day by day, we are finding dispute pertaining to branded, unbranded and then classification, respective accession and then rate applicable. So there's a need of the art advanced ruling authority must be formed on a earliest note. And coming to the last component which can be looked into excise exempted unit Uttaranchal and Himachal. We are not finding any specific notification is being issued in GST regime. How their exemption? I know exemptions are being done away with. Government is talking about GST going to be applicable but they have to be given benefit in terms of refund. For that refund there is no notification it's out as yet for all excise exempted unit in Uttaranchal and Himachal. Government is really receptive. They are listening to all of us together. They are doing their best from their side and we must compliment that government and GST council is coming forward to listen to our voices of trade industry and commerce. At the same time, we have to understand GST law is the biggest indirect tax reform. It has got this, oh, some teething problem and these teething problem government is trying their best. Only thing which I am looking from the government side, they come back, they should look at with certainty. Government is trying their best and they are really making a lot of changes and GST council is very receptive and they are really easing out and taking a lot many decisions to provide ease of business and to make GST good and simple tax for all of us together. From trade side, we have to really understand GST law is the biggest indirect tax reform since independence. Of course, there would be teething problem. None of the country where GST implemented, they have smooth transition. So we have to bear in mind there will be some teething problem. But the, with teething problem, government has to understand they should not do frequent changes. They should make up their mind and they should provide some uh, medium term kind of changes wherein one side settle down. If they do frequent change it, it would be difficult for any industry to settle down smoothly and that will create more obstacle rather than ease of business. With this summation, I am summing up with small note as rightly said in one Doha, dheere dheere re mana, dheere sab kuch hoi, mali si che sao ghara, ritu aye fal hoi. We all are looking for fruits of GST and I am hopeful things will really work out well for government of India and for the population of India. We all should come forward and uh, really do our part to make it happen for us good and simple tax as stated by Honorable Prime Minister. This is sum up of 22nd GST Council meeting. Look forward for the next capsule on next uh, whatever changes coming in GST perspective. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.